Lesson 1-5, Graphs of Functions. Here's a nice graph. It starts here at this point and goes up and down and goes up. To find the domain and range from a graph, the domain is the part of the graph covered by, part of the x-axis covered by the graph. So on this one, it starts at negative 5, and all the x values are covered until the graph leaves the scene. And we'll just assume that it just keeps going up and to the right. Therefore, our domain of this graph starts at negative 5. It's a filled in dot, so I know it's equal to, and goes through infinity. The range is the part of the y-axis. So the lowest this graph goes is negative 4 in the y, and it goes up above that. Goes through infinity. So domain is the x, range is the y. To determine if a graph represents a function, we use the vertical line test. It says a graph is a function if no vertical line can touch two points on the graph. So here's the first one. Is this a function? Yes, this is a function. Any vertical line touches the graph only once. No line touches the graph twice. How about this one? That's right, this one is not a function because for example, here is a line that touches the graph twice. A vertical line touches the graph twice, so it's not a function. Functions also have what are called zeros. A zero of a function is an x value such that the function equals zero, hence the name zero. So it's whatever x that makes the function zero. Since this function is the same thing as y, where on the graph do the y's is a zero? That's right, it's the x-axis. So that means the zeros are also the x-intercepts. So to find the zeros, you make your function equal to zero, and you solve for x. So let's find the zeros of this function. So we'll make the function equal to zero. And we'll solve for x. It's quadratic, so maybe we could factor. Times what makes 2x squared would be 2x and x. And what times what makes negative 30 might be 5 and negative 6. Let's check that. That would be negative 12x plus 5x is negative 7x. That is the middle. So that works. All right, so I factored. So now we're going to take each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Subtract 5, divide by 2, or just add 6. So this one has two zeros, negative 5 over 2 and 6. Other parts are graphs. Um, increasing is where it rises from the left to right. So on the graph here, it's the blue part where it's going up from left to right. Decreasing would be where it falls from left to right. That would be the red part where it's going down. Constant would be horizontal. So if your graph was like that, then it would be constant. Relative minimums are the lowest point in the area, so that is a minimum because it's the lowest in the area. And a relative maximum, which would be right there, would be the highest point in the area. So for each of these, this one is increasing from negative infinity to where does it stop? Now these are x values. It stops at the x value negative 2. 
and then it starts going up again, starting at the x value 2 and continuing on. So it's the x values. It's increasing. It's the blue ones there. Decreasing is just the red part. And again, it's the x values. We're starting at negative 2 and going to positive 2 in the x's for the red. There is no constant. The minimum looks like it is 2, negative 4. The maximum appears to be negative 2, 4. Now these are points, not to be confused with intervals. A few other things. Uh, for looking for the rate of change. The average rate of change is the slope between two points on a graph.